Um, our next speaker today, this morning, is uh, Brooke Coombs. Uh, Brooke has 10 years of cl clinical physiotherapy um, experience and is currently undertaking her PhD. She's presenting today on lateral epicondalgia with severe pain and disability. So please welcome Brooke. Thank you. Lateral epicondylalgia, or LE, is a common condition characterised by pain over the lateral epicondyle, often with spread into the forearm and aggravated by activities that load the extensor muscles of the forearm. So that's things like gripping. Its etiology is multifactorial and may involve a, a combination of local tendon changes, nociceptive processing changes, motor impairment and possibly psychological factors. Today I'd like to discuss uh, another potentially implicated uh, role of dysfunction of the cervical thoracic spine and neural tissues in LE. In support of this theory is evidence of greater report of self-report um, self of neck pain and neck provocation tests in the lateral elbow pain population compared to age match controls. There's also evidence of altered neurodynamics of the radial nerve. In particular, uh, Yaxley and Jell found an average of 12 degree deficit of shoulder abduction in the affected arm compared to the unaffected arm in those with unilateral LE. Other investigators have looked at the immediate effects of manual therapy directed towards the cervical spine. And these changes are thought to be related to a non-opioid endogenous uh, descending pain inhibition system. Furthermore, there's also uh, a number of studies that have compared the effects of local treatments directed at the elbow to those to treatments in which treatments have been performed at the elbow and also at the cervical spine. Two of these were performed by Cleland and colleagues. The first of which was a retrospective audit of 112 uh, patients and demonstrated that patients receiving the combined treatment achieved a successful outcome in a fewer number of visits. The second study was a pilot RCT of 10 subjects and they demonstrated greater improvement at six weeks in the combined treatment compared to the local treatment only. The condition of LE is described as a self-limiting condition However, the duration does vary. In two recent RCTs, 83 and 90% of patients assigned to wait and see, so they received no intervention, were uh, reported success at one year. Other authors report up to 10% develop chronicity and undergo surgery. High baseline pain and the presence of neck pain have been found as prognostic indicators of long-term outcome. However, the relationship between these factors is unclear. We aim then to identify whether these tests can distinguish the sub small subgroup of patients with higher pain and disability from those with lesser symptoms and from a healthy control population. We took as a part of our, uh, we well, we recruited as a part of our RCT 164 patients with unilateral LE of greater than six weeks duration testing positive to a combination of gripping, palpation, wrist and finger extension and excluding those with radicular, systemic or neurological symptoms. We recruited 62 healthy controls of similar age and gender and we also excluded participants who had neck or other arm pain over the last six months that had either sought an, uh, intervention or had uh, limited their work or recreational activities. And the aim of this last criteria was to try and recruit a population with LE, but in the absence of other um, conditions. These are some of the demographics of the LE population. They were middle-aged and overweight, and a third of them were involved in gripping-based sports, and a quarter involved in manual occupations. The average duration of injury was just under six months, and three quarters of them had, were experiencing LE for the first time. We then took this population and divided them into three homogenous clusters using SPSS cluster analysis. And we did this on the basis of the patient-rated tennis elbow evaluation. This is a questionnaire uh, comp comprising a series of 11-point Likert scales and is reported to be a valid, reliable and sensitive measure of pain and disability in the LE population. 
Here is a summary of those scores in the three groups, which we referred to as mild, moderate and severe. We have uh, the centre point being average scores, the box representing the standard deviations and tails representing the range of data. And the majority of patients fell into the moderate category, while 27 uh, fell into the category of severe LE and had scores ranging between 55 and uh, 80. For those of you who aren't familiar though with this, this questionnaire, here are the pain responses as measured on 100 millimeter visual analog scales. And we can see that the mild group had very minimal um, resting pain levels, as opposed to the severe group who had notable resting pain levels of about 20 out of 100 and significant pain uh, scores up closer to the 80 out of 100 at worst over the last week. The measures we chose uh, to use were chosen for their clinical ap applicability and we performed manual examination of all participants from C4 to T2 uh, and it was a two part parts of the examination. The patient rated their pain on a 11 point uh, numerical rating scale and the assessor rated the, the, the joint mobility on a, this seven point scale. We then classed a positive response as those of three or greater and severe, moderate or severe hypo or hypermobility. We also performed a radial nerve neurodynamic test based on descriptions of Yaxley and Gel, and that involved a gentle scapular depression, wrist and finger flexion, pronation, elbow extension, followed by uh, shoulder abduction. We then performed a sensitization maneuver of gentle scapular depression. We considered a positive response based on criteria, uh, previous study by War, that which reproduced the patient's elbow pain was restricted in range and displayed a positive sensitization maneuver. This test was only performed in the early participants. We then used logistic regression to compare the groups, the four groups for manual examination or the two group, the three LE subgroups for the neurodynamic test with gender and side as covariate and a 0.01 significance level. We found no differences between any of the groups in terms of the demographic characteristics, injury duration or other history. Here are the results of the manual examination and we have here the different segmental levels and the proportion of positive findings. We found that at 4, 5, 5, 6 and C6, 7 there were significant differences between the groups. Inspection then of the, the simple effects found that it was the severe and moderate groups that were different to controls, while people with mild LE were no different. We also found, not presented here, that at C67 the affected arm was more prevalent in positive responses than the unaffected arm. Positive neurodynamic test responses were found in 65% of people with severe LE as opposed to about 25% with mild LE. The differences were significant and significantly different between severe, differentiating them from both the mild and moderate LE. There's likely to be a number of plausible explanations for these findings and the first uh, is central sensitization, in which there's amplification of pain and pain responses by processes occurring within the central nervous system and these may include um, an increased synaptic efficiency and an expansion of receptive fields. Uh, referral from somatic structures in the cervical spine may also uh, contribute to lateral elbow pain and this would represent a secondary hyperalgesia. Alternatively, loading, mechanical loading of the neck during upper limb activities, secondary either to pain or disuse or deconditioning may um, be another explanation. It's important to recognise that due to the cross-sectional nature of our study, the causal relationships cannot be inferred. So it is important to, uh, in the examination of a patient with lateral epicondylalgia, to examine the spinal spine and radial nerve neurodynamics. 
and whilst patients with mild, milder symptoms may be appropriate just to use local treatments directed at the elbow, uh, in patients with moderate and severe LE, and by severe I'm referring to perhaps those patients who have uh, resting pain, higher resting pain levels and pain levels up around 8 out of, or the 80 out of 100, uh, that you consider treatment of cervical and neural tissues. Thank you. Um, Brooke now has some time for questions. If anyone has a question for Brooke, please raise your hand. And I think the microphone's still down in the audience there. So I'll get the microphone and then no one will put their hand up. Who's got a question? Anybody while I'm up this way? Okay. By the way, we're missing a handbag. If anybody happens to see a handbag that's not theirs, let me know. Questions down on the floor here? Shoot your hand up. I feel so good for that exercise, though. <laughs> no, Mary Ann, I think that's it. Brooke, I, uh, just before you just before you leave, I'm interested in uh, tennis elbow clinically, and uh, with the the people with the more severe symptoms, would you normally initiate the treatment at the at the elbow, or would you start treatment at the the neck with those ones? Uh, I'll think about that one for a moment. Probably, in terms of the studies, the one that had the most number of patients was one of those uh, retrospective audit, and they actually uh, audited notes from different clinic clinicians and who did different treatments. So um, they involved a combination of neck and elbow treatments, and I don't think they found any. They didn't uh, weren't able to narrow down um, a particular order that may be more associated with a more successful outcome. Um, definitely there's rationale for, for starting some of the local treatments in the milder population. So these are things like, you know, your exercises that load the actual tendon itself. Um, it may be that in the people with more severe LE, they, they have more hyperalgesic and, and more sensitive to the techniques at the elbow. So it may be like a lot of other conditions where you start somewhere more remote and put some more nociceptive input. Um, not, yeah, you don't want to do that you want to put in some, some afferent input into their system rather um, by doing it from a remote location. So that might be a, an explanation. All right. Thank you very much, Brooke.